Be Rad podcast is brought to you by MoFo, male optimization formula with organs to boost testosterone. Brad's macadamia masterpiece, mind-blowing nut butter blend, now offered on Amazon. Chili technology, temperature-controlled mattress systems for a good night's sleep. InsideTracker.com, offering blood, DNA, and fitness tracking data all in one place. And Organifi, whole food organic superfood supplements and drink blends. And please visit the shopping page at bradkearns.com for my personal selection of favorite products for health, fitness, and peak performance with great discounts for listeners. Here we go with the show. If you can ditch the what we call the big three toxic modern foods, refined sugars, grains, and industrial seed oils, you will be well on your way down the road to health, protection against disease, and longevity. We have to make that commitment to uh, distinguish between kind of habitual leaking into that category of automatic versus a, a true treat and a celebratory event. And I think the food tastes better when it's a special treat rather than an expectation. Part of the reason uh, that we enjoy certain foods is because we have become convinced that they were healthy. It's really interesting to me to look down at a bowl of salad, which I absolutely loved and enjoyed so much for years and decades, and now I have absolutely no appetite for it whatsoever. I just completely pass. So, Brad, what about you? What is your diet like these days? End quote. Yes, that was an innocent single line from an email exchange from my good friend, former podcast guest, Martin Bronze, just checking in, uh, talking about some of his dietary and exercise habits. And he pinged me back with a request. And I started writing and it came out pretty lengthy. So at the end of the email reply back to Martin, I said, thank you so much for this exercise. I think this is going to turn into a great breather show. So here we go. Yes, what is my diet like these days? Well, first off, it seems like the consensus these days in the health scene is that we have to ditch these processed modern foods as our main and overwhelmingly most important objective. And that's where we can finally come to a consensus agreement with all experts <laughs> realizing that uh, the uh, consumption of the refined industrial seed oils processed carbohydrates, sugars, and grains uh, is the number one most destructive aspect of the modern diet and the modern human experience. And if you can ditch the what we call the big three toxic modern foods, refined sugars, grains, and industrial seed oils, you will be well on your way down the road to health, uh, disease, protection against disease, and longevity. Uh, the number one priority would be to eliminate these industrial seed oils because they are immediately toxic upon ingestion and they render your fat metabolism dysfunctional. Uh, there's no sacrifice to give these up because they have no taste. And there's just a matter of increased awareness to uh, switch to cooking with more stable, temperature-stable saturated fats like butter, lard, recycled bacon grease. You can use avocado oil, olive oil for lower temperature cooking, and these things will be uh, a huge improvement in your health to uh, eliminate those, ruthlessly eliminate those industrial seed oils, especially the bottled oils, canola, corn, soybean, sunflower, safflower, and then also looking at those labels of all the uh, packaged, frozen, and processed foods, so much of it containing these seed oils. I think the most difficult aspect of ditching these seed oils is the fact that most restaurants, all the way from uh, the, the fast food restaurant on the corner to fine dining, cook their meals in these cheap oils to save money and they have no concern, uh, no health concern that they're cooking these expensive steaks or whatever the entree is in this nasty stuff. So you have to go out of your way to inquire at the restaurant and beg them to cook your meal in butter or something besides the vegetable oil, the industrial seed oil. And that's going to be a challenge because a lot of places uh, I've, you know, gone into this, especially at nice restaurants where I politely ask what kind of oil they use. And they uh, have a few times come back and said, we use an olive oil blend. 
<laughs> and I'm like, what the heck is that? That's a watered down, crappy, giant jug that costs however many dollars per gallon instead of using a, a cleaner and less health offensive oil. So try to find the restaurants that have some sort of commitment to health, or I guess you're going to have to limit your dining out. Yeah, that's a tough one. That's where we get most of our uh, seed oil doses is from the restaurants of all kinds, all the way up to top, top stuff. And then, uh, of course, at the same time, making a sincere commitment to uh, eliminate uh, or greatly cut back on the refined grains and sugars. And of course, uh, that also is going to encompass the elimination or the goal to eliminate these hyper palatable foods, which some great recent research and books like Rob Wolf's Wired to Eat and Stefan Guyanet's The Hungry Brain are identifying just how destructive these are to our fat reduction goals and how our brain is hijacked by these hyper palatable foods that do not exist in nature, uh, but kind Kind of hijack the dopamine pathways in our brain and give us this intense sense of pleasure and uh, develop uh, an addictive relationship to things that combine sugar, fat, and salt. And so what's on that list? Just about every treat, dessert, processed snack, all-American meal you can think of. I'm thinking of my fondness for popcorn. You can go back and listen to the Fatty Popcorn Boy Saga podcast and how I had to kind of uh, recalibrate that uh, that thing that would turn in from a, a treat to a, a habit. Uh, so all these things that go in the category where you're combining um, sugar and fat and salt together, pasta and meatballs, a sandwich, pancakes with butter on top. So that's a big challenge uh, because most of the uh, the commercial food out there, most of the processed foods are designed to be hyper palatable. So you will shop for them and buy more, your ice creams, your potato chips, and the list goes on and on. So that's the the big goal and the thing that even I'm mindful of because uh, once in a while I'll uh, enjoy indulging in these hyper palatable foods such as the popcorn, such as the cheesecake I had on my birthday. It was delicious. It was absolutely outstanding. Uh, but we have to make that commitment to uh, distinguish between kind of habitual leaking into that category of automatic versus a, a true treat and a celebratory event. And I think the food tastes better when it's a special treat rather than an expectation and boy, it's so funny how the dessert has become uh, immersed into culture to the extent that uh, we associate it with the meal. And then we're dining out at almost every restaurant and uh, the waiter or waitress comes by and says, can I tempt you for some dessert after you finish stuffing your face with a delicious meal? And it's like, why are you even asking? Well, it's because we expect it. So I think uh, stepping out of that and being really mindful that your number one priority is to eliminate or greatly cut back on the processed modern foods and the hyper palatable foods. So back to trying to answer the question uh, for Martin and everyone listening. I've been on this ancestral style eating plan, this primal eating plan for 13 years now, uh, starting back in June of 2008 when I first got together with Sisson and we started working on the Primal Blueprint Project uh, book and digital course and lifestyle movement. And so I cold turkey uh, put grains out of my diet after our first discussion. And previous to that, I was eating giant bowls of cereal every morning in my life. Of course, I wasn't eating the junky stuff. I was eating the clean granolas and oatmeals and things like that. But I ditched grains completely and haven't turned back uh, very little overall in the last 13 years. Same with the refined industrial seed oils. My consumption of those have been uh, almost entirely incidental and doing a good job there. And same with processed sugar. I definitely am not sitting down and consuming things made with processed sugar as a habit, such as a uh, a Starbucks drink or whatever you uh, might put as an example, a sweetened beverage. Uh, now, the recent... Uh, transition that's been fascinating and been emphasized a lot, the listeners know, uh, is this uh, carnivore idea that's captivated me since I was first exposed to it in early 2019. And it has compelled me to make what I'm going to consider to be a permanent shift in the direction of an animal-based, nose-to-tail style, superfood emphasis type of diet. Uh, rather than uh, my previous disposition, which was to emphasize 
uh, plants, vegetables, uh, and so forth as the centerpiece of my diet, not the most calorie source, but let's say the biggest uh, portion of the plate. And so I was famous for uh, making these huge stir fry meals and putting a big pile of assorted uh, green veggies and chopped veggies uh, onto the plate. And then right next to it is your salmon or your steak or whatever. So uh, that has been uh, really a, a huge uh, turning point. And I like to consider it a amazing exercise in remaining open-minded and thinking critically uh, when being presented with new information that runs counter to your fixed and rigid beliefs. I thought I considered myself to be well-informed, uh, a health expert, written many books on the subjects. And now uh, here's uh, leaders like Dr. Paul Saladino, Dr. Sean Baker, and others uh, suggesting that you don't really need to eat these plants in the name of health, that the animal foods have vastly superior nutritional profiles and more bioavailable nutritional profile. In other words, easy to digest and assimilate the food that you're getting from a fish or a steak versus uh, converting the beta carotene in a carrot uh, in a chemical process that's 21 times more difficult to obtain the vitamin A you need rather than consuming a dose of uh, grass-fed liver, which gives you the fully formed source of vitamin A called retinol, uh, which is so great for vision and many other uh, health benefits. So that's uh, been really interesting to uh, respect this new approach. And I think I'm amazed at the many people who have healed from nagging autoimmune and inflammatory conditions by uh, restricting plant foods from their diet uh, in this uh, test of the sensitivity level, because we all know it's undisputed that uh, virtually all plants have these anti-nutrients or antigens, uh, natural plant toxins in them uh, as part of their design. They're trying to ward off predators since they can't move. So they manufacture these agents that deter uh, people, <laughs> deter uh, creatures from consuming the plant. And our level of sensitivity is anywhere from uh, mild, almost imperceptible to extreme. In the example of gluten intolerance, celiac disease, it's very uh, well established how these plant toxins can have immediate adverse effects. Same with people with a peanut allergy who will blow up right away and go into anaphylactic shock. So uh, everything's on a spectrum. Um, I'm not going to say that I'm a highly plant sensitive person, uh, but the rationale to emphasize the foods that have the most nutrient density is extremely compelling. And so, boy, that's been a huge change. And so now the emphasis on my diet is I'm looking for uh, the cleanest possible animal products of course, in agreement with the anti-animal scene, uh, shouting out how, how bad the feedlot animals are and the conventional dairy products and the processed meat products, all that stuff. We're in wide agreement that uh, just because you're eating meat or fish or whatever uh, doesn't necessarily make it healthy when we have the presentations that are available that are really, really objectionable. Unfortunately, uh, farm salmon is one of them that's you know 80 to 90% of all the salmon on the market that you see in the restaurant or in the store. Uh, is the variety of farmed Atlantic salmon. And if you dig deeper into the, uh, the data, uh, these are highly over-farmed and a lot of times coming from uh, polluted waters and polluted environment to the extent that you might not even want to eat uh, what we all consider to be a super healthy food of salmon unless you can find the wild-caught variety. So uh, back to the thread and trying to answer the question, I'm looking for the highest quality animal products with uh, extreme emphasis on on the most nutritious characters in the animal kingdom. And that's why I created this Carnivore Scores food ranking chart with my pal, Kate Kretzinger, uh, the health coach in uh, New England, who's had such amazing success with her clients, uh, putting them on uh, experimental carnivore style diets, and then determining their level of sensitivity to things, and then uh, embarking on a long-term plan where they're eating a more nutritious diet and avoiding those things that are causing chronic digestion, elimination conditions, gas, bloating, digestive pain, uh, anything that ends with itis, these conditions are often aggravated by the plant toxins, uh, things like psoriasis and uh, arthritis and colitis, gastritis. Uh, people have had amazing healing experiences consuming animal foods that are uh, vastly less or, or absent of uh, allergens and sensitivities. So 
Uh, I'm going to encourage you to go over to bradkearns.com and download that carnivore scores chart, put it on your fridge and reflect on the tiered ranking system that we presented uh, for the various animal foods and also gave you a nice rundown of the least offensive and most nutritious plant foods that you're welcome to introduce into the diet and see how you do. I don't think there's a lot of people that are warranted to be a long-term extreme uh, restriction pattern of the traditional full-on carnivore. But for many of us, we can s- extremely benefit from cutting out things that we've long considered to be super duper, extremely healthy, like the leafy greens and the, the raw vegetables and the super nutrition smoothies where we're pouring a bunch of it into a concentrated dose. And that's been a great awakening for me to think that my salad, uh, the, 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 the badge of honor that made me a healthy guy, that I made these big salads most every day, uh, could quite possibly be uh, detrimental to my overall health. And it wasn't a much of a sacrifice to eliminate all the ingredients in there in favor of, let's say, uh, making up a bunch of eggs or sardines or things on the, uh, the carnivore scores, the superfood list. Okay. And it's a trip because if you go out to lunch and you're looking at the menu and you want to be healthy, and so you order that chicken avocado salad, uh, you realize that you're eating below uh, what Kate coined the steak line. So there's a line halfway across the ranking chart uh, where there's all the good foods, the, the highest ranking foods are above. And then below the steak line are things like chicken, turkey, and pork, because commonly they're raised uh, with corn and soy feed, and they have an inferior nutritional profile to red meat. Yeah, you can look at all the headlines, red meat causes cancer. But if you source the highest quality red meat, at least getting certified organic or ideally finding 100% grass fed or locally grown red meat or choosing the alternative red meats that are less uh, processed and less mechanized, things like buffalo, bison, elk, lamb, venison, you are rocking a superior uh, nutrient profile to the widely popular chicken, turkey, and pork uh, that is widely uh, considered to be superior to red meat. So we got to kind of keep that open mind again and look into the experts and people that are saying this with great certainty and tremendous research behind them. I just did a great podcast with Rob Wolf. So go listen to him as he talks about the incredible research he did into uh, red meat and sustainability of, of farming so that the vegan argument that it's cleaner for the planet to only consume plants and, and not consume uh, the most nutrient do- dense foods on the planet uh, is very uh, effectively negated by the people that are really in deep to this system. Um, again, to distinguish between uh, the properly, healthily, sustainably raised animals and the feedlot animals, which are widely agreed to be pretty nasty for the environment and for our personal health. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I had some other notes here in the email that I'm really inspired by the guys out on the extreme cutting edge of this health movement, uh, guys like Paul Saladino and my main man, Brian, the liver King Johnson, founder, president of Ancestral Supplements. And boy, their diets are uh, pretty extreme if you were an outside observer coming in and looking what's going on. Uh, but they are on the cutting edge and doing some amazing things. And uh, Brian on his Uh, about us page at ancestralsupplements.com will give you an amazing education into the world of ancestral living, probably at a level that I've never seen with anybody else. So this is a guy who routinely engages in five-day water-only fasts. Every quarter, he and his wife, Barbara, I think Barbara's a willing participant. She was smiling when I saw her, Uh, but they go on these five-day fasts. But get this, before the beginning of the fast, or at the beginning of the fast, rather than a meal fit for a king, they do what Brian describes as a failed hunt workout, which is an extremely difficult, full glycogen depletion workout. And then they commence their five-day fast. And that is believed to be uh, prompting incredible benefits with autophagy. That's the natural cellular, internal cellular detoxification process. Uh, The research from uh, Walter Longo at USC shows that uh, in that length of time of fasting, uh, the organs uh, throughout the body actually shrink 
because they are shedding this inflammatory damaged cellular material and regenerating to become coming back uh, more and better and prompting this stem cell function to actually renew and regenerate uh, bigger or healthier and better heart, lungs, kidneys, everything across the body. Uh, one of my favorite books of all time, Dr. Deepak Chopra's Ageless Body, Timeless Mind, uh, cites scientific research from the quantum physical chemical level that you actually manufacture an entirely new stomach lining every three weeks and you make a new liver every six weeks and you make a new pair of lungs every uh, six months. I'm, I'm not getting the numbers exactly right, but from this uh, quantum uh, biology level, we are capable of renewal uh, to an amazing degree. And this uh, fact Fasting practice that Brian has taken to the extreme and Barbara uh, is the uh, great example, a shining example of uh, a great attempt to stay healthy. And then when it's time to eat, uh, this guy can put together some pretty incredible meals. He likes to make uh, smoothies with, for example, dropping in nine pastured egg yolks. So imagine buying a dozen eggs at the store. Yeah, I shop at the store once a week. I buy a dozen eggs. It's great. I'm eating these pastured eggs. How about downing nine of them at once in a drink? And so I'm taking inspiration from these guys. Uh, Saladino came over to my mom's house in LA and we visited and uh, he, he stayed the night and in the morning he was slicing up raw frozen liver and salting the heck out of it and offering all those an in interest to uh, indulge in his wonderful breakfast meal. But this is what superfood eating is all about. So I'm having fun doing things like uh, my midday breakfast meal will be uh, a big giant yellow omelet with nine pastured egg yolks and nice to slices of uh, sun-dried tomatoes and sardines inside. So you got your sardines, you got your pastured egg yolks. These are high ranking on the superfood list and it tastes great. Same with the uh, the raw frozen liver. It doesn't have that unpleasant taste that the uh, jello-like uh, medium rare liver does. So I'm getting my liver game up by indulging in the food in a raw form. Uh, speaking of uh, carbs and their place in a carnivore-ish approach, I'm not worried about uh, avoiding them in the name of uh, being strict carnivore, uh, especially because I don't have these nagging autoimmune or inflammatory conditions. If I did, I would be more restrictive. Uh, Paul Saladino advocates consuming honey if you are looking for carbs and you're concerned about your exposure to plant toxins. Uh, he kind of qualifies honey as a carnivore food, right? Because the bees are making it. That might be disputed because I know the plant is needed to be participating in there too. But anyway, honey is one of the easy suggestions for a less offensive plant food. Uh, but I also feel like in my personal example, uh, I have these uh, assortment of variables. One of them is my age in the 55 plus uh, division. And I also have these passionate athletic goals where I'm pushing my body pretty hard and I'm trying to uh, complete these pretty challenging workouts. And so these, you could be considering these uh, stress factors, right? Anytime we fast and skip a meal, it's still a form of stress to the body. And I don't want to stack too many stress factors on top of themselves in the name of health. I don't want to be too badass with my carb restriction, uh, my high intensity workouts and my fasting periods, because I do feel like I've gotten in trouble in the past uh, going too far out of bounds uh, with my enthusiasm for, let's say, the ketogenic diet when I was doing research for our book, The Keto Reset Diet. I would do these uh, high-intensity workouts. I'd continue to fast for a few hours after that, and then I'd have a ketogenic meal, and then the hours would go by, and 36 to 48 hours later, I'd have these crash and burn experiences where I needed to lay down on the ground and take a nap. And I believe that the stacking of older athlete pretty difficult workout, which you can listen to my shows about uh, adapting my workouts to make them less stressful, especially the hit versus hurt breather show. Uh, so my age, the workout that was pretty darn tough, probably too tough, and then the fasting, and then the carb restriction uh, put me into uh, a negative state. And so I'm uh, opening my mind, especially in my personal example, not for everybody, but in my personal example, to tone down my efforts to uh, avoid carbs in the name of uh, health, and also to uh, engage in uh, tremendous fasting efforts in the name of health. I love the soundbite from my podcast with Rob Wolf where he said, if you want to live longer, lift more weights and eat more protein. 
very nice. So leading that active lifestyle, you're doing great. And if you're a person like me, who's not terribly concerned with body composition, unless I get into fatty popcorn boy mode, but generally speaking, right? So I have good blood work, athletic goals, good body composition. I don't have an extreme uh, calling to uh, restrict carbs and try to uh, get into that ketogenic state and, and facilitate rapid body fat loss or get into that strict carnivore state to facilitate rapid body fat loss. So what you're going to find uh, leaking into my diet are an assortment of these plants and carbohydrate foods. And I wrote them in bulleted lists for Martin to give him the full disclosure. So here you go. For the first time ever on the show, this is the, the leaking and the presence of non-carnivore stuff in Brad diet. Number one on the bulleted list, tons. And I do mean tons, people, tons of 80% or greater dark chocolate. Uh, my favorite brands right now are askinosi.com and lilybellfarms.com. There are numerous other ones that I love, but oh my gosh, um, I will en enjoy a, a square or two or three. And sometimes on days where uh, I'm not eating uh, giant meals, maybe I'm too busy running around or something, uh, I will notice, I will admit that an entire bar can be killed in a single day. Ah, <sighs> but guess what? Oh my gosh, the health benefits of dark chocolate are tremendous. And there's a whole section in the book, probably too long of a section due to my extra enthusiasm and how I've indoctrinated Sisson because I ship him bars and I say, you got to try this stuff. Uh, but dark chocolate has so many health benefits. The phenethylalanine, they call it the, uh, the love drug. We make it ourselves in our, in our bodies, but it uh, gives that sense of well being. And it's, uh, what's released when you're in that state of uh, feeling in love, when you're really excited and floating around. And that's why dark chocolate has been uh, so popular throughout the ages. So dark chocolate up there on the list. I also consume a lot of avocados, which are uh, one of the uh, least toxic fruits, right? It is a fruit. And so also that wonderful source of mono unsaturated fat. So those have a uh, staple presence in the diet. I also enjoy my sweet potatoes uh, somewhat regularly, frequently. Uh, I like to slice them and make this oxtail stew in the crock pot for eight hours. So you go get the oxtails at the butcher, one of the nice organ meats. It's actually the tail of the cow. Uh, I sear them on all sides, which is kind of tough. You got to keep turning, turning. And then you dump those in the crock pot, slice up some sweet potatoes. You can put uh, carrots, you can put uh, onions. And eight hours later, you have the most delicious, thick, rich stew for the great winter months. Can't recommend it enough and one of the easiest recipes you can imagine. So the sweet potatoes are consumed in that manner. Maybe we'll consume them straight. Nice uh, preparation in the toaster oven with the crispy skin. Or little did I know when I moved here in Lake Tahoe that uh, a walking distance away, the local pub has these incredible sweet potato fries. So when I'm really hungry and ready to indulge, I will order up takeout. I can't believe they're only charging like $5.55 or something out the door, but they are are fantastic. Here's the thing. Like I said at the outset, restaurant meals, most likely, I'm still haven't got up the guts to ask, but they were probably fried in the objectionable oils. But guess what? How about this for a cop out? There is research that the occasional dosing of something toxic will be considered a hormetic stressor and actually serve to fine tune your body's antioxidant response. Uh, I think the research was with uh, smoking a cigarette every two months or something uh, didn't have that much of an adverse health effect because it kind of keeps your, uh, your immune system on alert, your antioxidant defense system on alert. So I might put my occasional dosing of bad oils from the sweet potato fries as allowable because uh, I'm giving myself a little bitty challenge, a hormetic stressor. I don't know. I don't like cop outs, but hey, it's, it's worth mentioning, right? And if you really do uh, indulge occasionally, certainly your body can handle this stuff and it's not worth worrying about. Uh, also enjoying the squashes as they're here in season as I record this during the winter time. Acorn squash, butternut squash, they're so easy to make in the crock pot or the instant pot if you uh, are in a rush for time. And that's a nice uh, source of uh, starchy carbohydrate. And the high starch carbohydrates actually have uh, the much less uh, concern about the plant toxins than the things above the ground like the leafy greens uh, and things, uh, the cruciferous family. 
that have higher levels of these uh, objectionable agents that many people are highly sensitive to. So it's kind of a flip-flop of the old commentary uh, where uh, Primal Paleo recommended, you know, uh, taking it easy on the starchy carbs because you get a bigger carbohydrate dose and uh, going ahead and, and uh, indulging in the big uh, servings of leafy greens and salads and uh, all that other produce and cruciferous vegetables that are uh, more fibrous and uh, less glycemic response. So pretty interesting. Same with fruit. We always were saying uh, for years to uh, take it easy with fruit because it's uh, got a lot of sugar and it can be easily converted into fat in the liver. If you already have full glycogen stores, fruit can be lipogenic, uh, but it also happens to be uh, the least offensive type of plant because again, the fruit is the final offering of the plant, right? The plant does not care if you pick the berry off and eat it. The plant doesn't want to get eaten itself. Uh, the seed is the most uh, precious part of the plant, right? The life force of the plant. And that's why seeds are some of the most uh, highest ranked in the uh, plant toxin category. So everything's flip flop from the old times where we said, watch it on fruit, watch it on squash, go ahead and eat your kale salads. And now we're saying, hey, watch out for those kale salads. Those might be ripping your gut apart and you don't even know it. Whew, yep, critical thinking, open-mindedness, self-experimentation, right? I'm just telling a story of what my diet's like, but I want you to experiment for yourself and notice, hey, maybe if you're backing off on those salads and those stir fries, you might notice some changes. And when I drifted away from that, inspired by this carnivore message, I noticed an incredible uh, absence of digestion and elimination symptoms that had plagued me for my entire life. And I'm talking about leaky pipes in association with uh, endurance runs. So if I'm out there pounding the pavement for or the trails for 30 minutes or an hour, I would always have some uh, associative uh, bowel concerns uh, with those efforts. And I always thought well, that was attributed to the pounding of the digestive tract. But I believe it was the irritation caused by these plants, the minor irritation that I didn't really notice in everyday life until I tried to go run on that stomach that had a giant salad the night before. Uh, same with um, all manner of gas, bloating, transient abdominal pain. I especially noticed these in the hours after consuming my super nutrition green smoothie that I once proudly put on YouTube and showed people how I was dumping down stalks of celery and big piles of kale and spinach and raw beets and uh, putting in the powders and making this big, uh, this super nutrition drink in the morning. Uh, but as it turned out, when I really got into that game and was going every single day with the, the super smoothie, um, I would have gas and bloating and my stomach would r literally pop out for at least a few hours after I drank the smoothie. And the life-changing moment for me was when I was discussing this matter with my friend who was also really into the health scene and making a smoothie every day and so throwing all that stuff in there. And he said, yeah, uh, I get stomach pain also after the smoothie, but it's so healthy that it's worth it. And his comment stopped me in my tracks because I realized something is wrong with this picture here. Because if something is truly healthy and nutritious for you, it shouldn't pop your stomach out like a balloon for several hours. Of course, my stomach always uh, righted itself, but it would be painful and it would be strange and uncomfortable. And I just kind of grew to associate that with normal until the comment woke me up and said, you know, that's not right. And maybe I should stop uh, drinking these as an experiment and see if things go away. So this massive shift away from salads, stir fries, and super green smoothies has been an amazing change and more regularity and simplicity with my digestion and elimination. Uh, so back to the list. Uh, just to recap, and then we'll go through this more quickly. Uh, the dark chocolate is there, the avocados, the sweet potatoes, squashes during the winter season. And I also enjoy canned sun-dried tomatoes. For some reason, those go well with any recipe. Maybe I'm not a gourmet and I'm uh, spoiling some of the things I like to put them on, like eggs or steak, but I go through those canned sun-dried tomatoes. Uh, as far as nuts and seeds, I am not consuming many of those because Typically, I use those in a snacking mode, and now I don't need to snack anymore because my uh, the, the nutritional density of my meals, I don't have any uh, cause for snacking in between meals, trying to adhere to that two meals a day strategy since my name's on the book. Why not? But as a treat, oh my gosh. 
the Brad's Macadamia Masterpiece. I can't say enough about it. It's getting rave reviews from every single person who's tried it. And I do think about it as an indulgence, a luxury, a delicacy, maybe a spoonful here or there. Or when you're heading out for a long hike, me and Moore and I both like to take a big giant spoonful and then we will go out there for four hours, no problem, sustained by that nice nutrition and great taste that you'll find in the masterpiece. It's now for sale on Amazon. So I guess this show is being interrupted by a commercial in the middle, but it's really great. And I'm glad to have my name on it and promote it. So if you are not sensitive to the toxins contained in uh, the nut and seed family, you can try this as a great delicacy. Uh, Someone wrote a compliment saying that, yeah, I I love this stuff. I put it in my smoothie. And I'm like, no, no, it's too precious. It's too good to put in a smoothie. Go dump some almond butter in a smoothie if you want to make a smoothie and enjoy the masterpiece with just a spoon. Okay, back to the list. Uh, I've also been uh, fond of taking these little baby corn tortillas that you can buy in a packet. Uh, They're like for street tacos. And I fry those in olive oil or butter to get them just a little bit firm, not crunchy, crispy, uh, but not floppy either. And I'll put my egg meal or my steak meal inside those with some avocado and it's kind of a go-to meal. So yes, I'm getting some corn tortillas, some grains in my diet and it's seemingly on a more frequent basis lately. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm also trying to uh, introduce some uh, spoonfuls of raw honeycomb. And this is per Dr. Saladino's enthusiasm for honey and especially in and around my workouts because I do feel like uh, as as I talked about the piling of those stress factors, the aforementioned stress factors, that going out of my way to enjoy a little extra carbohydrate in and around my high-intensity workouts is a helpful strategy for me. Uh, you know enough about my fascination with popcorn, so this is really trying to stay, stand strong as an occasional, occasional treat, whether we're turning on a good movie or whatever's going on, rather than a daily habit. And I'm a master at making this uh, delicious popcorn that has quite a bit of melted butter and flavored olive oil, either lemon or lime flavored. Oh, yes, with plenty of salt. And then you're talking about a true popcorn experience. Uh, I mentioned the cheesecake on my birthday. So on very rare occasions, uh, maybe a, a birthday here and there, or when my mom makes her butterscotch brownies on Christmas that she hadn't made for about 30 years for some reason. And then someone mentioned them that uh, a great memory from childhood. And now she's on the rampage and uh, making little gift bags for people. And boy, you can have, you can have a little bit of those and be incredibly satisfied. And I think that's a different story than when I was a youth and would just mow down, you know, large rows of brownies, uh, getting across the entire casserole pan. But now when my, uh, my taste buds and my senses have been dehabituated from intense uh, sugar inhalation uh, as per my my time when I was a triathlete and eating so many calories. Now, a little goes a long way. Same with the cheesecake uh, or anything that's presented. Uh, you can look on my Instagram. I made this interesting recipe of paleo pumpkin pie, and it's really hardly classified as a dessert because it's not very sweet at all. So if you're uh, familiar with how sweet the, uh, how disgusting sweet the commercial pumpkin pies are. This is not going to taste anything like it, but it's pure pumpkin uh, with a whole bunch of other ingredients that are uh, low carbohydrate and really uh, tasty. So it's an, it's a nice experience where you want something that uh, simulates a dessert, but it's not really a high sugar crash dessert. I actually make the crust out of uh, pureed nuts and I throw in uh, melted butter and coconut butter and uh, that makes for a nice uh, mushy crust, kind of like an oatmeal consistency. I spread the crust in the pan and then I prepare the mix, which is just canned pumpkin, a few eggs, and maybe dropping in uh, one or two teaspoons of honey or maybe a tablespoon uh, total into the mixture. And you cook that thing up and it's pretty good. So look on the Instagram if you want the recipe. Uh, I'm eating a lot of full fat yogurt. And there's a great product that we just found called St. Benoit Vanilla Yogurt. I usually try to stay away from the vanilla because they're overly sweetened. Uh, But this one tastes really great. And it's a really uh, authentic, true yogurt product with that nice, uh, distinctive taste. So I've been hitting that uh, now and then. 
And once in a while, I'll make a protein smoothie, but not too big on the smoothies. Uh, but it's really something to do if I want some extra calories to recover. I think you can get protein in its real form, uh, its food form, as your first choice. And then if you want extra protein, which is a small segment of the population, uh, people like my son who's trying to pack on a bunch of muscle and keep it on, and then he's slamming through those giant jugs of protein and drinking them in between every meal and late into the night, good for him. But for me, once in a while, yeah, if I want to have a really nice uh, recovery uh, protocol. I will hit that uh, with some protein scoops. Uh, collagen protein, I'm particularly interested in now to preserve uh, joints, connective tissue, and skin health. And I'll make that with coconut milk, uh, a few uh, chunks of frozen banana, and then also throw all the recovery stuff in there. So I have powdered creatine, glutamine, and some electrolytes, something like the LMNT product that Rob Wolf and Luis Villasenor put out. So that's my protein smoothie once in a while. And hey, if I'm shopping while I'm hungry, I notice that once in a while, the sesame blue corn chips will land into my shopping cart somehow. Oh, I also like the red hot blue corn chips. And then we'll take those puppies home, dip into some guacamole, and have the classic chips and dips. But if I said I did that every night, that would be a huge difference from saying once in a while this does happen. And I do associate that with shopping when uh, I'm you know, starving. <laughs> okay. Oh, what else? Uh, I'm cooking steak and uh, sauteing the onions and things like that. So again, a strict carnivore might frown upon that, but I have no problem uh, consuming some sauteed onions and maybe other uh, vegetables at times in preparation with the recipe. Or also to be polite, if someone serves me a meal and there's some broccoli spears on there or some asparagus, of course I'm going to eat it and I'm going to enjoy it. But I have to say, uh, these guys done and mess with my head because as soon as I started to dig into this carnivore rationale and learn about the plant toxins and learn about the possible uh, health compromising aspects of eating the go-to things like the big uh, stir fries that I mentioned or the salads or the cruciferous vegetables, broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, etc. I have to admit that it has done something to my brain to where my taste buds uh, no longer uh, consider this uh, delicious. And it's a really authentic brainwashing experience. And I realized that part of the reason uh, that we enjoy certain foods is because we have become convinced that they were healthy. Uh, I don't know if that goes the other way. Like if we know a cheesecake is unhealthy or doesn't have a lot of nutrition, but it still tastes good. So I wish it would go both directions. Uh, but it's really interesting to me to look down at a bowl of salad, which I absolutely loved and enjoyed so much for years and decades. And now I have absolutely no appetite for it whatsoever. I just completely pass. And same with the delicious uh, steamed vegetables that I always would vote a big thumbs up and say that I really, really love them deep down. But a lot of that love was due to the uh, purported health benefits. And now uh, I, you know, I remember uh, having my first few plates of stir fried vegetables or, or uh, steamed broccoli, and it kind of tasted like cardboard. Like there was just no connection. It was really strange. I don't know if anyone else uh, can weigh in on that. If so, please, uh, please help me out. Give me some support. Tell me I'm not crazy email podcast at bradventures.com. Uh, and, you know, we'll, uh, we'll talk through it on a future show. But yeah, so I have a lack of appetite for salad, steamed vegetables, and stir fry that uh, took place with a, uh, a, a great boom uh, a couple of years ago. <laughs> How about that, people? Um, I think I've covered all the points. You got all the uh, aspects of non-animal uh, foods that are uh, still in the diet. And there's a good big picture. I think one takeaway, because I look how long this bullet list is that I mentioned, uh, that I'm going in a, a intuitive manner that's not really uh, a great source of stress, uh, whether I'm having to count macros or really uh, pull my hair out, missing things that I wish I could eat. So if I want to fry up some corn tortillas, I have no problem doing that. I'm not concerned about uh, where it 
sits on the scoreboard. And again, every, anything that relates to be uh, an indulgence or a celebratory food, I want to keep those in that category. And by doing so, not worry about it at all. I remember the cheesecake on my birthday. I had a nice big slice, put some whipped cream on top. It was so good. And then what, 30 minutes later, I think I was uh, uh, making my helping myself since it was my birthday to another slice. Imagine that because, uh, you know, you keep these things out of your diet for a long time. I don't know about you, but sometimes I'm inclined to overindulge because they're so damn good. But that's a big difference from the daily habits. That's the, the biggest takeaway there. And I appreciate the exercise. Thank you, Martin Bronze, for teeing this up with an email exchange. And I hope you guys get value out of it. Um, I mentioned Brian Liver King Johnson and his amazing diet and lifestyle practices. So if you go over to ancestralsupplements.com, that's also where you can order some mofo for 10% off using the code BRAD. Thank you very much. Uh, but you can also click on this page that says about us. And uh, that's a, a really authentic and amazing rundown of Brian and his family's lifestyle and what inspired him to uh, start this company and make these organ meats. His children were not thriving and they were getting sick and returning to the doctor and getting prescriptions. And so he had this great health awakening. Uh, but the content on that page is probably some of the best stuff I've ever read on the internet for how to live that total all-in ancestral lifestyle. And this guy is no joke. You go to his house, there's no Wi-Fi signal. So you have to plug in and there's 100 foot ethernet cords dangling around all over the place. So you can always find a place to plug in. You're not allowed to use your cell phone. They sleep on the ground per Katie Bowman's recommendation. Oh my goodness. It's all in all the way. And the dietary strategies are second to none. And you might not want to go uh, you know, to that extreme, but I think we can gain great inspiration from these people that are carrying the torch and that are exploring and digging deep into the science and second guessing uh, people like Rob Wolf and Paul Saladino, who uh, amazingly lined up on the podcast to uh, produce back-to-back -back shows. And the back-to-back -back interviews really blew my mind because these guys are such straight shooters and so honest and so uh, willing to just engage and call out stuff that they believe to be bullshit in uh, conventional medical and dietary uh, advice and strategy that it's really refreshing. And I aspire to do the same. So I'm giving you the honest, full truth here. Hope you enjoy it. Thanks for listening. Share the show with somebody. You can push the button on your podcast app and and send a little text message and uh, get them into it. Have a great day. Talk to you soon. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba.